Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how a cantilever end is handled in the moment distribution method for a multi-span beam. We're going to be taking a look at this particular member, and the key here really is going to be don't consider joint D to be a joint. What that actually means is that we will not lock it once we are ready to move forward. So the only joints that we have that need to be locked against rotation are joints B and C, and once that is done, their stiffness factors may be found. So member AB is a fixed fixed member, which means it has a stiffness factor of 4 EI over L. And for BC, it's also a fixed fixed, has a stiffness factor of 4 EI over L. Find out what's going on at joint C. We need the stiffness factor for CB, and that is 4EI over L. And then you need the stiffness factor for joint CD. And that's the one where you need to be a little bit careful. What you've got here is you've got a member that's fixed here, it's cantilevered, and the idea is, is if you were to rotate that member, how much resistance does it provide? And it actually provides zero resistance, meaning it's got a zero stiffness. With that in hand, we can calculate the distribution factors for each of the joints. Distribution factor for joint B, remember A, 4 EI over 30, 4 EI over 30 plus 4 EI over 20, You'll notice the EIs, I actually didn't write those down because those are constant along the entire length of the member. That works out to be 0 0.4. Distribution factor for joint B, but member BC, is 1 minus DFBA, and that is equal to 0 0.6. We know that the distribution factors at a single joint only to sum up to be 1.0, so that's what we have enforced here. Let's go on to joint C. DF CB is equal to the stiffness of CB divided by the total stiffness of the joint, which is CB plus CD, and that will be equal to 1.0. DF CD is equal to 1.0 minus 1.0 which is equal to 0, 0.0. So let's just take a look here. Sum up to be 1.0, sum up to be 1.0, so we are good on the distribution factors. The next thing we need to do is to compute the fixed end moments on our beams. You'll notice that member AB is a fixed fix, member BC is a fixed fix, and CD is nothing more than a cantilever. We'll go to look at our beam charts, and for that member with the distributed load, we will get 2.4 kips per linear foot multiplied by the length squared, which is 20 squared over 12, and that will work out to be 80 kip feet. And for the member AB that has two point loads, we don't have any beam chart that has two point loads on it, so we will use superposition to get what's going on there. Just look at the equations. The left end of the beam, this is the computation I would do, 60 kips multiplied by 10, multiplied by 20 feet squared, all divided by 30 feet squared, and then handle the 30 kip load. 20 feet times 10 feet squared over 30 feet squared, and that will equal to 333.3. Now at the other end of the beam, we'll handle the 60 kip load. plus the 30 kip load, and that will all equal to be 266.7 kip feet. Please recognize all we were doing is we were using these particular equations right up here. So let's go ahead and translate those back over to where we've got. This will be 333 0.3 kip feet. This will be 266.7 kip feet. For 
the distributed load, we decide it was 80 kip feet and 80 kip feet. And then we get to member CD, and the difficulty that people run into on this is they usually don't find these on beam charts. And so many people feel like they are at an impasse on this. What you want to recognize is that that is a statically determinate beam, and so you can use basic statics to solve for the moment here, and that will be 300 kip feet. That's nothing more than the 20 kips multiplied by 15 feet. Let's go ahead and get the table for moment distribution assembled. Here's joint A, B, C, and D. We will write down the distribution factors that we have known previously. It'd be 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 1.0, and 0, 0.0. For D, I'm not going to give a distribution factor. And for A, since it was originally a fixed support, I'm not going to use a distribution factor there as well. That support will take whatever moment it is being given. But I will go ahead and write down the fixed end moments that I computed. 333.3, 266.7, negative 80, 80, negative 300, and of course there's a zero moment out of point D. Let's be very clear that as we are writing down the moments, in moment distribution we are assuming that clockwise is positive, which means that would be a positive moment, that would be a negative moment, negative moment, and so forth. Okay, now we can go ahead and start to balance the joints. We're going to do this simultaneously. Let's look at joint B. I will take 266.7 minus 80. That will be 186.7. I figure out how much of that moment gets distributed to each side. Negative 0 0.4 is equal to negative 74.68. And on the other side of the joint will be a negative 112.02. So you'll notice really what that has done is we have added a negative 186.7 to that joint so that the moments will balance out. Let's go ahead and also get for joint C what's going on there. We have an 80 minus a 300 is equal to negative 220 and then let's find out how much it distributes on each side so there's the distribution factor for the one side and also the distribution for the other side. So let's go ahead and get that put up in here. We'll handle the distribution. And that will be negative 74.68, negative 112.02, positive 220, and 0. That handles the distribution, then we need to do the carryover. And for any members that are fixed fixed, it's a carryover of a half. So let's take half of this, negative 37.4. We'll take a half of that, negative 56.01. That distributes over a half this way, 110. But since D is not a fixed support, the carry over there is going to be zero anyway. Let me draw a line and then you would go ahead and balance out that next joint. So we do a distribution. So for joint B it's out of balance by 110 now so according to the distribution factors we could do this and for joint C it's out of balance by this much so according to the distribution factors we would do this, and then you, of course, would get your carryover, as we had previously done, and you would keep continuing that until your carryover was small enough. So here we've got those distributions going on with their associated carryovers. Let's just be clear here with a couple of these. You've got the carryovers going on there. Then you've got the carryovers 
just as it continues like this and what should be happening is your carryover should be getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you go on and then eventually you will be satisfied that it's small enough and so the final step is to go ahead and sum up everything that's in the column to get the answer. Sum up everything that's in the column to get the answer. And with this you should come up to be very close to those summing up to be equal to zero and out at the tip of the cantilever. You'll notice there was never any carryover that came over this way and so that remained a zero and that's the way it should have been. So we have found the internal moments of this beam that had a cantilever as part of it. That concludes this example. As always, it's an absolutely beautiful day to study structures.